love history. Did your yeah. wife keep her maiden name? Man, I tried to call you. Did you change your number? Man, what you wearing? You smell good. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Muchos thank you. Joe's thank you to Anthony Castrovince for joining us on the final uh, the final day of the first week of the new year. So as such, I guess this is our last opportunity, Anthony, to do a New Year's themed bit with you. Uh, and you have obliged <laughs> by kind of assembling some New Year's resolutions. And I misstated it earlier, not for all 30 teams so much, but for the league in general. And last year, first year of the new rules. Stolen bases on the rise. How does that apply to your first New Year's resolution for baseball? Well, my, my resolution for baseball would be to take what we learned in 2023 and let's accelerate it in 2024. I think we were all curious to see how the new rules played, uh, you know, what that environment looked like from a base stealing perspective where the game got so far away from the stolen base uh, in, in such a short amount of time within the, uh, the sabermetric era, if you will, where – you know, teams did not want to run unless you could have a 75% success rate. So the success rate was high, but the number of attempts, uh, you know, kept diminishing. Um, and then all of a sudden, you know, this past year, we had the highest number of attempts since 2012. Uh, and we had the highest success rate ever with 80%. So let's just keep pushing that. Let's let's all summon our inner, our inner Ronald Acuna Jr. I'm not saying, you know, everybody should attempt 87 steals like Acuna did. I'm not saying everybody is Acuna, but, you know, I, I think it's reasonable to suggest. So last year we had about 4,300 stolen base attempts. I think it's reasonable to get to 5,000, which is about where we were in, in the late 1990s. That would be about a 15% increase. I think that's, you know, a, a modest proposal uh, as we move forward here with the bigger bases and, and, uh, and the pickoff restrictions. I think that could happen. Um, you know, we have to get away from that mindset of, of you know, timidness and, and more aggressiveness. I think that's what fans want to see. You know, when MLB did its surveys that, that helped lead to these rule changes, it was the number one play in baseball that they missed. It was, it was the stolen base. So let's give it to them. As long as we agree that this isn't fair for catchers anymore, because, come on, it's, it's, <laughs> it's ridiculous. A pitcher can't pick over that many times. Bases are bigger. They're, it's uh... – yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't yeah, think is, to, to your this point. Is a loaded, this is a loaded topic with a catcher on the show. We, not, we could have uh, gives me <laughs> done a different nightmare. Day. But Sorry, to your lady. point, I don't think we're even <laughs> – I, I, I don't find myself doing games talking about a catcher's stolen base percentage much anymore. No. It's just not as relevant. It doesn't matter. The, I think yeah. the greatest stolen base – or the greatest uh, base stealer of all time, I, I don't remember uh, – the percentage was around 80%. is the highest all time with a minimum number of attempts. And we're talking about the league averaged 80% success rate yeah. this year. Yeah. So that's yeah. the – every base runner in Major League Baseball this year was the best base stealer of all time. It just shoots it right down. It's yeah. not. So it's if, not if every team steals about not 150 fair. bags, we get to your 5,000. Let's move on. Your next resolution. All right. Uh, regarding teams that are in, in rebuild mode and getting closer to finishing the job and competing than teams that are still one or two years into the process, what would their resolution be? Well, if I could define it, it's, it's kind of like teams that are, you know, in their so-called window of contention. Sometimes that window is not as wide and long as you think. And I'm thinking here about teams like the Orioles and the Reds. I mean, the Orioles last year, really last winter and last year, um, you know, didn't make the, the big move. And obviously they won 101 games regardless. So it shows how, uh, you know, silly the, you know, the, the frustration, I guess, uh, among the fan base uh, last winter was when they, they didn't make any blockbusters. Um, but, you know, they were they were a little tepid at the trade deadline. I do think it came back to bite them, you know, with the Bautista injury and in their bullpen. Yeah. You know, they were a little short. Um, and, you know, they were a quick exit in October. Uh, the Reds, you know, a, a little different there where, you know, their, their timetable was really accelerated last year to their credit. You know, they had a lot of young players contribute immediately uh, at the big league level. Um, but again, another team that did not push its chips in at the trade deadline and fell short of October. You know, they had one of the worst rotations in baseball and, and didn't make the moves to augment it. And I think that came back to bite them in a winnable NL Central. So um, and then just a, you know, a wide open NL playoff picture in general. So I guess the point would be, you know, I, I think about the Cubs, for instance, the Cubs are supposed to be a dynasty, you know, after 2016. And it can close on you fast. You know, it, it, it can come fast in, the, in today's game with, with so much young talent, and it can close fast, too, that, that window of championship contention. So I'd like to see teams like that, and whoever emerges this year, you know somebody will, 
you know, push your chips forward and let's go. The, the Orioles and Reds have two of the top five farm systems in the game, so they're both in really good position, you know, should they be in contention again midsummer uh, to to be the team that dominates the trade, trade deadline and, and goes all in. Cubs are a great cautionary tale in that regard. Uh, so regarding a team like the Orioles, who had that, you know, that depth of young talent they, that they refused to, to kind of part with, um, the young guys seem to be getting more of an opportunity yeah. with some teams than others. I could point to the Angels, who over the last three years have accelerated somebody quicker than anybody else yeah. from a recent draft. Uh, is there a message there in terms of a resolution? Well, I, let's let's see these kids from. You know, so last year's draft class was one of the best in recent memory. There were reasons for that with the the pandemic and you know kids that maybe would have come out of high school instead went to college, and then you know the draft was kind of loaded. Uh, last year and I'd love to see the fruits of that draft pretty quickly you mentioned the Angels you know they promoted Nolan Chanuel already last August uh, was their first round pick but these three guys you see right here all really good candidates to not just reach the big leagues in their first full professional season but you know maybe have a long stay in the big leagues this year and have a high impact I mean uh, Wyatt Langford could take the championship Rangers to yet another level uh, Dylan Cruz and Paul Skeens we watched them in the College World Series I know it's college ball and not professional ball, but if there's ever guys who you would feel comfortable like making a quick transition from college to the major leagues, those two can do it. They both have the tools to do it. Um, you know, I'm not saying Skeen should be the Pirates' opening day pitcher, but I don't know that there's uh, that you want to waste a lot of those bullets, you know, in the minor leagues. So I think it's kind of a broader discussion. It's not necessarily something teams should be thinking about, but it is interesting, Maddie, when you look at our game and. Um, you know, if you're selling this sport to young athletes, right, who have opportunities, you know, maybe in multiple sports, I mean, a, a quicker timetable to the big leagues is a pretty strong selling point. It's a st strong selling point to the fans to be interested and invested in the draft. I think we're seeing that timetable from the draft to the major leagues shorten. Um, and, you know, the, the developmental timetable is, is not what it once was. So it's, it's kind of an interesting juncture in the game where we're seeing these kids much quicker than we used to. More awareness, more familiarity with these younger kids than ever before among the fan bases, that's for sure. Hey, lastly, uh, this one hits close to home because, man, does this aggravate me when I hear it in the media occasionally. <laughs> um, the MLB. Tell us, give us the yeah. definitive statement Ugh. on why that makes us so upset. Yeah, and I, I try not to be, you know, Conan, the, the grammarian, uh, too often, as we called one of my college professors. But, um, you know, this this really irks me. I, I, it's really just come up in the last few years, I'd say, on a, on a more widespread basis. I don't remember ever hearing this 10 years ago, for instance, the MLB for the Major League Baseball, which makes no sense whatsoever. We are accustomed to saying the NBA, the NFL. And if you, you know, take away the acronyms and, and say out the full association uh, phrases those phrases make sense but the major league baseball makes no grammatic sense it doesn't sound good and when you use it and many people do i see it all the time on social media everything you say afterwards i'm not nobody's hearing you i mean they shouldn't be at least <laughs> it, you, you can't make a salient point by saying you know the mlb should do this you know you you sound like you don't know what you're talking about right away when you say the mlb so please let's let's nip this in the bud before it gets completely out of hand uh, it occasionally has seeped into some headlines where, it, you know, in, in other otherwise legitimate uh, media enterprises, uh, you know, Twitter posts, et cetera. It, we got to put the stop to this right here in 2024. We can't let this go any further. Couldn't agree more. I, thanks for doing uh, the good work there, putting it out there. Maybe somebody who's more active on social media than I am can put that out and start. Let's start a grassroots campaign to snuff this out in the early stages of the new year. We appreciate the time, Anthony, as always. And we'll visit with you again next week. All right, guys. Sounds Thanks good. for Thank coming you. on to the hot stove. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> well played. You're welcome.